This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTTER for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on dudes and dudettes, and welcome back to another exciting episode from the good folks from Kotobukiya. So why don't we start things off with the 135 scale Kyoko Shiki from the popular arcade game Border Breaks. And without further ado, let's get to it. Welcome back my dudes and dudettes to another exciting build from the good folks from Kotobukiya. Now, I need to be 100% transparent. This kit that I'm showing you guys right now was not purchased from Newtype HQ, but they do carry it. In fact, this was purchased by the good old folks from usgundamstores.com. So, they are not sponsoring me. I just want to show these guys some love because competition is always nice to have when it comes to selling Gunpla. With that being said, let's jump into this awesome build from the Border Breaker series. So, from first glance, when you look at the box art, it has this beautiful illustration really showing what this mech design is truly all about. Has a similarity of the skull mech designs from Xenoblade and a little bit of virtual arm, but I'll get into that another time. On the very front part of the box, you get an understanding of what this mech looks when it's fully assembled, which looks absolutely awesome. And on the other side, you get this beautiful spread on what you can truly pull off with this model kit. Everything down to really cool dynamic poses, static poses, and a good assortment of weapon accessories. Everything to open and closing hands, ammo packs, you name it. It is a solid kit. So, let's take a look what's inside. As always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual with a little QR code inside giving you weapon accessories for the mecha in the PlayStation 4 game. I don't have much use for it, but if you guys want to use the code, go right at it. As for the final little piece of paper is an actual dossier listing all the runners in case you happen to lose one or one is missing from the model kit, so it's always good to have in case you lose some pieces down the road. More illustration for the model kit itself as well as some screenshots for the PlayStation 4 game and a beautiful shot of the runners for this model kit. Surprisingly, there is a lot of runners for this small model kit, but it definitely shows when you actually build this kit piece by piece. And on the final last page gives you a beautiful color guide to put some custom flair to this model kit, which is well known for Kotobukiya model kits. So, with that out of the way, let's take a look what's inside this model kit. Right out the bat, you're gonna get a hefty amount of polycaps, which is always good for this model kit, an abundancy of white pieces, which is gonna require a lot of custom paint. As for the next runners, you're gonna get a hefty amount of gray pieces for the inner frame, hands, and weapon accessories, as well as a small assortment of lime green pieces, which are gonna be used for the feet, shoulders, hips, you name it, pretty much anywhere that makes a mobile suit, oh, I'm sorry, mecha look really, really cool. More gray pieces for the hands as well as the sword hilt. And shockingly enough, there is only one clear blue piece for this model kit and that is the head. And it's very, very tiny, so you gotta be very careful not to lose this little guy.
my dudes and dudettes as this video is wrapping up i want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this model kit but the one thing that definitely been bugging me for the whole entire week is is this kit truly worth the 150 dollars and i have some good um reflections related to that topic i remember purchasing my very first kotobukiya kit which cost like around 150 plus tax it was like 160 dollars which was Zone of the Enders Jehudi model kit. It was my very first introduction to Kotobukiya and really understanding how they do model kits. And I did a straight up build. I didn't do any custom painting, no weathering, no cleaning off the, the bits to make things nice and smooth. It was just a straight up build. And when I was done with it, I was very happy. But as the days went on, I was really reflecting on it like, wow, I spent that much money and it does not look anywhere near the box art. Did I waste money? And, and a lot of people will tell you like, no, it it basically comes down to what you really like and what you really want to model kit. But if you want to go the extra step, you kind of have to learn how to do the things you really want to do. And the truth of the matter is, I don't feel like that's satisfactory at all. In fact, I wanted to rebuild this kit again from the ground up. I mean, I had the old one, but I figured it was good to start a fresh start to to really build something that I worked really, really hard. So I did a lot of learning how to properly paint, 
brushed up on my color theory, learned how to properly paint a kit, got all the references I could for the video game model, and at the very end, adding LED lights. Oh, man. Oh, it makes me tear up just thinking about it. I was very happy. I was very, very happy. And then it just dawned upon me that Kotobukiya kits are not for beginner builders. If anything, they are a mild introduction for those who want to get into building resin kits because not all the pieces for these model kits are accurate to what they have for the illustration. You still have to do some extra work on making it close to what you see in the box or which isn't bad. If anything, that's more encouragement for you to go the extra step. But as I said before, it is your money. You're entitled to spend it how you see fit. I'm just giving my two cents to if you just want to do a straight up build and put it on your shelf or on your office table, like where I have mines, it's going to look cool there. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's going to look really, really cool. But if you're the kind of person that is a perfectionist and like to see things evolve and see yourself evolve as an artist, you're going to want to actually put the effort in to just take it to the next level. But Take it from baby steps and then work your way up. I mean, hey, my baby step was jumping into a perfect grave, which I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Guys, that Unicorn Gundam was a beast. Oops, getting off on a tangent. But uh, let's talk about the negativities about it real quick. Um, the kit doesn't come with any water slide decals at all. And the only clear pieces that are available in this kit are the eyes, and that's it. Now, the kit promotional artwork definitely emphasizes that there are, are segment areas that have clear glowing bits like how you would see in the video game. But I guess Kotobuki didn't feel the need to actually add that little small bit of detail. I guess they were more focused on trying to get the product out to promote the video game since it's like roughly three years old. But... That's not the biggest issue I have with this kit. It's just, it seems pretty bare bones with the very hefty price tag. You know, you're you're not getting any water slide decals, you're not getting an action base, which the promotional work shows you can put this kit in. And you get a promotional card to get weapon accessories from the video game, which half of us have never played the game. So that's that's pretty unfortunate. And it makes things very difficult to really recommend this kit for people. But enough about that, let's talk about the goods! As always, Kotobuki knocks out of the park when it comes to articulation for the model kits. Regardless of how big or small they are, they are incredible model kits that are close to figurine quality. And I have to say, this kit has really, really solid articulation down to the ankles, knees. They got a nice ball joint rotation around the arms and the wrist. The head, it's a Probably the weakest ball joint in the model kit because it's very low to the torso. It would have been nice if it was just like a couple centimeters, a little high, so you can see some, some nice neck detail, but it's very scrunched in, which looks really, really funny and very awkward. And last and finally are the weapon accessories, which is like a sword and like a beam rifle. And the beam rifle is actually pretty cool. It's like on a hinge system where you can fold it upward to where you can use it in a rifle pose. And then when you're not, you can close it backwards so it can dock onto the back. And the blade itself has like a locking system where you can pull the blade upward to extend it just a little bit more and then lock it into place so you can put it in the backpack. It's it's a pretty neat design. And if anything, this design is kind of like the spiritual successor of the virtual on virtuoids. And it, it didn't really dawn upon me. Although the design is very similar to the skull designs from Xenoblade Saga, but they're very much on par with the virtual on model kits. I don't know. You guys leave a comment below. Let me know if it's the same art designer that does this um, particular mech design. I would really do appreciate that. So there you have it, the Border Break Mecha design. Lots of cons and a good hefty amount of pros. But as you can clearly see here, there's a lot of things you really need to pay attention to when you invest in such a pricey kit. And I absolutely had a blast building this. I would absolutely build another one if it came my way. Maybe not the new ones. I would definitely want to tackle the old ones before Kotobukiya got the rights for this brand. But it is a solid, solid kit. Absolutely fun, challenging, 
and in my perspective was definitely worth the purchase because I'm always hunting for the next challenging kit to build and install LED lights. And at the same time, there's a third category which this kit really catered towards and that is like the hardcore uh, gamer fans. So people that have played this game for the last three years at the arcades or played on the PlayStation 4 port, it's really targeted towards that audience. And I did get my chance to play in the game because I did buy it and it's okay. As I mentioned before, it is literally the spiritual successor of Virtuon, but nowhere close to the original Virtuon Ototoro Tangram. That kit is not kit. Um, that game is just nothing but speed and jump cancels and slides and close range. Like, oh god, that game's incredible. So, at the end of the day, would I recommend this kit for anyone? And the answer to that is, I'll let you decide on that. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do appreciate that. And a big shout out to the new subscribers that came to this channel. And I will see you dudes and do that on the next video. Later.